celebrating its 250th anniversary this year, Abbotsbury Subtropical Gardens is one of the only subtropical gardens in the UK. With its own microclimate, the estate has developed over the years from a simple walled kitchen garden to a 30-acre oasis of plant life brimming with history. Uh, this is a 30-acre subtropical garden um, between Weymouth and Bridport in Dorset. Um, it's been here for 250 years next year. It was established in 1765 by the first Countess of Ilchester and it's full of exotic and unusual plants from all over the world. Just behind us, nearer to the coast, there was a big um, mansion which was the weekend and holiday home I suppose it would be for um, the owners of the estate and the kitchen garden or the walled garden was what provided them with fruit and veg. But the Countess was also a plant hunter and so she would go off to Japan and Jamaica and China and come back with plants to try in the garden here inside the walled garden. Um, and the, the whole of the gardens all around the walled garden were actually woodland. Um, so it was very sheltered which meant that they could grow some sort of less hardy plants. And then gradually the wall garden got too crammed and then she moved outside and then her descendants also were plant hunters and they started building up around the area outside the wall garden until now we have this 30 acre garden. The key to the garden's success lies in its position. Sitting in a sheltered valley right on the coastline, just a pebble's throw away from Chesil Beach, provides an unlikely location for such tropical plant life. Quite lucky in that we've got our microclimate here. There's a lot of holm oaks. Um, you can see behind me the, the evergreen oaks. Um, and they provide a blanket during the winter, um, keeping the warmth in the ground and trapping the warm air. Um, so that allows us to experiment with plants, um, uh, less hardy ones. And so we've been able to develop a subtropical garden. Um, again, we're, we're close to see it, the sea, so warm sea air comes in. Again, keeping the garden that little bit warmer, creating a microclimate, um, and it's, it's just fun to experiment with what we can get away with, um, bring in less hardy plants and make something a bit different. I think we're more comparable to the gardens down in Cornwall in terms of our climate. So it's... Even though the gardens has its own microclimate, being situated so close to the sea does have its downside. As the seasons change and winter approaches, extra care and precautions are taken towards some of the less hardy plants. We have some plants that we put out through the summer that we kind of, <coughs> we have in pots and then we'll take them out of the pot and sink them in the ground. Um, it's called plunge planting and we'll um, leave them there for the summer but they're not hardy enough, they're too tender to stay out all the winters. Um, other plants, there's a few around that we will put fleece over just to cover them up. It's wrapping them in horticultural fleece. Normally it's just wrapping around, so it's like a blanket wrapped around, almost mummified, um, just, for the, just for the winter. And they look quite artistic once they're all done as well. With um, very cold weather, we might go and mulch the base of some of the more tender plants. So that'll be with um, bark chippings, something like that, material like that. We'll put a good layer of mulch over where the roots are and that will just trap more warmth in there. Although winter can cause a few difficulties within the garden, they can also face a few unexpected problems from the weather. This is one of, the, one of nature's lucky moments. This big tree is a giant pine tree. It's got fungus in the roots and it was quite showing signs of danger. So we were intending to fell this tree and we had we had discussions about putting winches on it and everything. And during the storms last week, it took it over, bowled right over 150 foot pine of timber on the other side of here. And it went exactly where we wanted it. So that was sod's law, it was fantastic. So trees down, no need for tree surgeons. <laughs> with different seasons comes different events for the gardens. Easter brings all day fun for all of the family with a 30 acre Easter egg hunt and the early evenings in autumn allow for a beautiful lights display with autumn colours that fill the surrounding foliage. It's one of our most popular events. Um, we floodlight the entire 30 acres using uplighters, theatrical floodlighting, powered by um, silent big Rolls-Royce type generators dotted around the gardens. All the 
cables uh, are hidden under the ground, under the pathways, and then these magical uplighting of all the autumn colours takes place. And every 10 feet on the left-hand side of the pathways, we put candles and lanterns to snake people through the tableaus of colour um, all the way around the garden. It's, it's absolutely magical. We have a, a lighting engineer comes in and he, he generally does stage lighting, so it's perfect for in here. Um, and that's a month, two months worth of preparation. So we have our side of setting up making sure everything's safe, the paths are safe, because obviously it's at night time. Um, and then within the event, the half term falls for schools and also Halloween. So for three nights we have, um, instead of just illuminations, we add um, witches and ghouls and scary things dropping out of trees and scary scar workshops and ghost stories and, and make it a really family fright three nights. And that proves very popular and people come in fancy dress, thousands of people come dressed as Dracula and blood dripping everywhere and the children do trick and treat in a safe way with their families. So it's a great family, family event. The gardens have come a long way thanks to the devotion of the Abbotsbury tourism team. This is a big year for everyone involved at Abbotsbury as they will be celebrating the 250th anniversary of the gardens. Many plans have been put in place to mark this occasion which will leave a big impact for future years. Next year is its 250th anniversary, so it's a very old garden. The things planned for our 250th anniversary. Um, we're launching our own beer. I found a microbrewery in Bridport, near Bridport, who are going to make a beer using a plant that grows in the gardens called Drimus. And Drimus was used in the 1700s on the uh, sailing ships. Um, because it's got lots of vitamin C in it to hold back scurvy and so this new bitter will be special and we'll be only able to purchase it here. Um, we're also putting in the garden a major new feature. We're building uh, a Burma rope bridge over the pond at the bottom of the garden which will be 36 metres long and that's going to be fun. The passion and the drive which every member of the team has is clear to see in the constant ever-changing and evolving plant life and the gardens expanding further beyond their original walls. It will be interesting to see what the future holds for this small, tranquil sanctuary which has made such a big impact on the gardening world. It's going to be fun next year at uh, Abbotsbury, so please come.